All right, happy Saturday, or for those following along at home, happy Thursday. So I'm here at Cal Tire on the west end of Edmonton, and uh, what I'm planning to do is drop off all these split rings and get the get the new tires mounted. So hopefully these guys these guys can hook me up. Came to the right place. This guy's been doing it for 30 years, he says. They call him Dr. Tire. And they got the cages all set up and everything. So an early bird gets the worm. I was lucky enough to get in here before any other jobs. So they go, we don't have any other jobs yet, so we'll get at it and get her done today. So thanks, Cal Tire. You guys rock. Alright, so well Dr. Tire's working away on those rims, and yeah, fingers crossed he gets those done today. I figure I'll uh I'll get working on some other some other items that need doing to get this truck finished up for in time for the Lesco show. And it's funny because seeing this truck on on blocks and jack stands reminds me of a story a certain someone told me a long time ago on how he was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. And police were chasing him, and he actually got away. And he raced his car home, threw it on, uh, took the wheels off, threw it on blocks, and then threw a tarp over it. And the cops kept driving by real slow going, I wonder if that's the guy, but it can't be because it's on, it's on jack stands. So anyway, he got away with it. So I thought that was pretty slick. All right, so uh, what am I going to work on today? Again, I don't have the wrap done yet. They're coming next week. So I should probably get some work done though. I don't want to waste this Saturday. So maybe what I'll do is I'll get the exhaust and uh, mock that up. Again, I'll have to take it back off again, similar to that handle, um, just so they can get the gold wrap on. But maybe that's what I'll do. I'll start working on the exhaust. And actually, before I do that, there is one thing I need to do uh, on the trailer. So let's go out there and take a look at the trailer. <laughs> yeah, that was, a, that was a fun weekend going to pick this thing up. I was trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for the stagecoach scene to match the Smoking the Bandit movie. And I was mucking around on the interwebs there, and I found the guy that actually owns the rights to the digital image of that uh, of that scene. Be the passing lane where started down the when it lost the and I reached out to him, and he said, "Yeah, we can. I can't sell you the image, but I can definitely get you the wrap you won't need for your trailer." So he said, "Get me the dimensions, and not just the dimensions, you know, front to back, basically of the of the outer edge." of the rib section here. He said, you're, you're gonna have to do is get me a measurement of uh, going in and out of, over all these humps. So what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is just hang a tape measure and then just tape it in on each of these indents and then the tape measure will go over top of them all and hopefully that gives an accurate enough measurement. I guess worst case, if it's a little too long, they can trim it off. But the idea there is if they just did the wrap, which I think is like eight foot six, just that height, and they started going in and out over all those bumps, they would end up probably a foot short with the, with the sticker height. So we'll try and get that done, uh, send that off to them. I'm kind of scared to see what the cost is gonna be. And then uh, it's gonna be some significant labor as well. I was talking to Tom at Fleet FX and he was saying it's gonna take a crew of his guys probably four or five days to actually put the wrap on this trailer. It's not just like slap the sticker on there and go. It's gonna to have to be heated up and kind of um, pressed over all of these, over all these bumps, the edges here on the panels, and then of course all the rivets, which is a significant amount of work. And before that even happens, that probably won't happen until the spring. I might order the wrap and then just sit on it till the spring, because I still need, I've got to do some patching. Uh, there's some nick spots. I mean, I don't mind some of the, some of the roughness because it's, uh, it's got wear and tear, just like the movie, it wasn't perfect. So I might try and fix a few of the things like this tear here. I'll grind off all these rivets and take the, the placard off. Take the old decals off. Let's see that 94, probably 95 last time this was registered. And then of course I got to paint the front black, uh, the, the edge and the top and bottom edge black. 
got to sandblast and paint the bottom, the undercarriage, I think it was silver or gray. And then of course I need the, I need the Thermal King uh, reefer shell. So if anyone knows where there's a, an old school rectangular Thermal King shell, let me know, send me a note, twinstickgarage gmail.com. Uh, I guess worst case if I can't find one, Don will have to whip up a replica and we'll, we'll bolt it on there. This whole front gets painted black. And then, yeah, the, the back end here, I was actually looking, a few of the fans had uh, told me about these old trailers and said, well, the, if you get, if you get, the, if your OCD gets the better of you with this Canadian spread, with the wheels being too far apart and you want them kind of tucked together like the movie, that can be changed. And it's not as hard as I thought. I was thinking, well, could I modify the suspension here and chop it and shorten it? But looking at it further, again, on the recommendation of the, the fellows that have been doing this for a while, you can actually see that there's rails here and these, these bars come out and you can actually, well, I'm not sure how this works. Yeah, they're probably all seized, but the, the pins come out and then you can actually, um, with the brakes on, you can back up and the, the rails would move over top of the suspension and you can bring the suspension farther forward on the trailer. And there was two trailers used in the movie. And if you notice, one of them had the, the wheels right at the back of the trailer. Testicle sort of a bomb. And then one of them had them way farther forward. And I think that was probably for some of the stunt scenes and in town, because when the wheels are farther forward, obviously they didn't have any weight in the trailer. But when they're farther forward, you can turn tighter. So I think that's why, if you look real close, you can see the one trailer had them, had them up there. But anyway, where I'm going with this is what a guy could do, if he was so inclined, and I probably will be, is hack off this big bumper, drop this down, and you could take... You could take the pins out and this suspension would just come shooting right out the back. Obviously you have to support the trailer with a forklift and then pull this, this whole thing right out of here, this whole dolly. And if I could find ones with the axles closer together, I could just roll that right on in, which would be kind of slick. So if anyone knows where, where that's sitting, again, somewhere not too far, I don't feel like driving all the way to New York again. But if I could find one, I could work on that this winter, redo all the brakes, the drums, the hubs, the bearings, all of that, pull this one out and then just shove that new one in. So I think that, that might be the project over the winter, but yeah, I'm excited about this trailer. So, okay, so what I'll do is I'll hang a tape measure there. I'll measure that up. We'll get the dimensions off and we'll see what the, see what the wrap's gonna cost. But man, I can't wait. This is just gonna be the, the icing on the cake when Got the whole stagecoach scene on there because you can't have a snowman truck without the trailer. <laughs> Arts and crafts hour here at Twin Stick Garage. So I started the tape measure. Uh, when I first measured this out, it was eight foot three and I got it wrapped up. Uh, I got it starting at the one foot mark. So we've got eight foot five and they're not, it's not quite tight everywhere. I guess I could put two pieces of tape. So I think what we'll probably call that if you took all those little bits of extra, we'll call that eight foot six. So it added three inches. So I was wrong about it being a foot short. If I had done eight foot three and went over all the ribs, we'd only be three inches short. Okay, so we'll tell the printer eight foot six. Mint. All right, so next, I figured I'd take these hub seals off of here and replace them with new. Jack again and check the free plan. Yeah, it says acceptable is one to five. So 
We're kind of on the high end of that. And it's probably, I see about four there. So we'll, uh, we'll call that good. Good enough for this outfit. Okay, so I went over to my other garage and I grabbed the exhaust pipes that I've been saving for this truck for the last year. If you recall, I don't know, a bunch of episodes ago, I was successful in trading these for the original warm air dual snorkel Canadian intakes that were on this truck. So it was a heck of a deal. I don't care much for the muffler. I think mufflers are overrated and I'm probably gonna try and find a piece of five inch pipe to put in there instead to make it sound nice. Um, but I did want the heat shields. This is where the money was on this trade because normally these are the movie correct ones that have holes all the way up. They don't have those two little strips without holes. And then the bottom lip here, there's no corrosion because normally road salt and dirt and grime go in behind there and just rot these from the inside out. And these ones are in perfect shape. They just need a little bit of, a little bit of polish, a little bit of shine. So I was going to mount them on the truck, but I need two I need two things. The first up is there's this kind of mud flap piece. I think people, a lot of people just use a piece of mud flap to hold it in the top bracket and uh, it gets pinched between this bracket and then the one on the cab. So that would have been easy. I could have made something up. But the other problem was I didn't, uh, I thought I had the correct pipes for the bottom. Now I found these in the sleeper. Um, so I just assumed they were the right ones. But then when I took a closer look at them, they're not. So the previous owners of this truck must have bought these. Maybe the, the elbows were rotten out, rotted out and they were going to use them. And then they discovered that they weren't going to fit because the proper Kenworth ones don't, they, they make the bend, but then they make kind of a, a weird bend forward to get around the bunk and then they go up. So I'm going to have to go to Kenworth and get a couple of those correct elbows in order to mate these up to these. So I can't mount these today, unfortunately, but that's okay. Again, I was just going to mock them up and then I would have to take them off anyway, because we need the gold, but I did get a confirmation uh, text from Tom. They are going to be on their way next week and we'll get that gold put on there and then I can start slapping these on. So I'll go and get the, the correct parts that I need. But the other thing of interest on this pipe, I don't know if you can see it in the screen there, but these are miter cut. So these are the, the 45 degree slash cut miter cut that you see on Peterbilt's and they look cool and all, but they're not right for the movie. So I did, uh, I did discover by going to look at my old junkyard that I do have the right, the right, uh, the movie correct caps. And I was looking at these old, the old exhaust that was on the truck originally, or at least when I bought it. And check this out. These are these press on or slide on tips are the exact ones that were used in the movie. Now they're a little corroded, but hopefully we can clean them up. So what I was thinking is I might try to hit them off of there or actually maybe I'll just cut it, cut them and then we'll play with them inside the shop because Alberta is the strangest place. We get both extremes. We get minus 30 or minus 40 Celsius in the wintertime. And then in the summer, it's like, I don't know, plus 31 or 32 today. So it is hot. So what I'm going to do is probably just cut them off and, uh, and play with them inside. Dude. So now that we have those caps in hand, I'm just letting some PB blast sit on there and, and soak and see if we can actually get them to separate. But now the question needs to be, do I want to have the, cause I can just, I can just hack that off square and then put those, those 45 elbows and just slide them on there. But the question now is, do I want the, the left side to be taller or the right side? The, the two trucks that were used in the film, well, there was three trucks used in filming. There was two used in filming around Atlanta for the whole movie. And then they, they used a third around California uh, to film the intro. But the two movie trucks is the weirdest thing. So the, the 73, if you look really close, has a taller stack on the left. And then the 74 has the taller stack on the right. Kind of crazy. I mean, you never notice just watching the movie, but again, we're going for movie accuracy and I figure, what the hell, let's, uh, let's make the right one taller to match the movie. So, 
I'll mark these off and I'll cut this one. Maybe we'll knock about eight inches off this one and then maybe we'll only knock four inches off, off the other one. But again, won't be able to put them on the truck till I get the right elbows and uh, I'll get the little, the little flap, the exhaust flap that holds that in there. But, and then I guess another five foot piece of straight pipe because straight pipes are cool. Forget about it. Okay, I got my list going of things that I need to pick up. Seals, exhaust elbows, support. I need a couple more batteries. Because uh, a few of them are older, they're not taking a charge. I need some braided line to run back to the fifth wheel and the third member. Oh yeah, I gotta go steal the, the valve off of, because this truck used to have the headache rack on it, and that's where the valve for the trailer, uh, the trailer airlines is. So we'll go steal that off of there and try and figure out a way to mount it. Yeah, so this is the this is the trailer valve and it's mounted on the old headache rack that I took off Project Snowman a while back. And of course, this has been sitting out for far too long and steel and aluminum never play nice together. So these, these studs have just welded themselves. Uh, I've tried using PB Blast and some heat and a hammer and now I'm breaking it. So I'm just gonna have to go, I don't know, I might try Fort Gary or Traction, one of those places. I'm sure they have this type of of trailer valve, just get a new one. I also got to figure out the, uh, so it goes with the airlines. And this is the electrical for the trailer. I just hacked it off when I took the headache rack off. So I'll have to rewire that with a female uh, mount for the plug. Oh man, gotta figure out where to put the pogo stick. I suppose the pogo stick would probably go right there. I need to get a pogo stick. Uh, a fan sent me the airline, so I have those, but I need two glad hands. A uh, female uh, plug. Well, wait a minute. Last time I was at the wrecker, I got a, uh, eh, hang on. Yeah, I got one of these for the Duke. But we can use it here for now. Yeah, that'll, that'll work good. All right, a little bit of primer, a little bit of trend clad, and it looks like new again. It actually looks better than the frame. I'm gonna have to, to repaint that, but I won't worry about that now. Again, we're just trying to get to the show. So these are the lines that a fan sent me. I went and dug these out, he sent these to me probably over a year ago when I first started this project. So thanks, we're finally using them. Uh, so I don't need glad hands anymore, but these ends on here, it's some kind of newer uh, flared fitting that goes in there and I don't have an adapter for that, but I'm sure I can find that. So I'll just take these in and get those so I can adapt it up to the, uh, I don't know what that is, half inch hole. And then I'll get a new valve and we'll just mount that underneath. So that'll solve the air lines. The pogo stick, I found an old pogo stick off the Duke. It's a little rusty. And I, I mean, we could use it, but since we're going on a parts run, I might as well grab a new pogo stick. But what I can do, just trying to do what I can right now with uh, the limited parts that I have until I go and collect all these little missing pieces. But what I can do right now is strip all these wires back and wire up that plug so at least we'll have some lights on the trailer, hopefully. And then what I can also do is I can use the wires from here, maybe I'll run them to a junction box and then I can actually run them up to the lights that I was gonna put in these holes that I cut a while back. So let's get going on that. Okay. So I drilled a couple holes. I didn't want to drill holes in the frame. I thought it'd probably be easier to drill in this aluminum cross member. Okay. Little pack of goodies. Better have a little extra. That's the deal with battery power tools is they inevitably die on you when you're trying to do something. Okay. 
something like that. And we'll make each a, an inch or two shorter than the next. Get on there. Slippery with the flux. Just like that. Watch him, everybody. The boy's squirrely. Yeah. Nice. Pick that thing, Jerry. So I'm struggling here. So I finished wiring up the back there, and then I was trying to get a, a signal to at least click. And the old Signal Stat 900, at least the original one in here, I couldn't get to work to save, to save my life. And uh, so I checked the plug and there was power coming to it. So the only thing I can think of is maybe the box itself is bad. Because I never tested it out when I bought this truck. So I had a spare Signal Stat from when I was mucking around with the peat. So we'll try that and I gotta try and wire that up. But I don't know, I'm just, I'm facing a lot of headwinds like I was saying. And I just got a call from my my buddies at Cal Tire. And I guess Dr. Tire didn't, uh, didn't think there was any issue with those old aluminum split rims, but I guess some of the other folks there at the shop started sniffing around and then they invited their, their safety leader. And he came out and he went, oh no, 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 we're not mounting these. So I guess their excuse they were using was they looked at the part number on one of the rims and it didn't match in their little chart it said this rim was actually a two-piece so it just had the single ring and the wheel and of course all the ones i dropped off were three-piece they've got a, a a ring a flange and then the aluminum wheel and he said no the, the part number doesn't work so i went well how many did you check because i got those in a lot of different places from a lot of different people and he goes well we checked the two but we didn't check any other ones. So I asked him, I said, well, maybe check the other ones and see if the numbers, you know, align with your chart. And if they do go ahead and air them up, at least I get two steers. Cause I could put the, the 24 fives on the back to try and get to the show. But man, they, uh, they were, they're pretty reluctant to, to play with those old split rings. It's funny though, cause Dr. Tire didn't seem to have an issue. So we'll see what old Cal Tire comes up with, but I don't know. I don't know guys. I'm, uh, I'm running out of time. I only got a few weeks left to try and get this truck ready and it's it's pretty far from from road worthy so we'll see but i'm not holding my breath i guess worst case i'll take the the peat and bring the trailer and uh a bunch of coors and uh you're welcome to stop by and say hi okay postscript on cal tire these guys actually came through for me after all. They, uh, the safety inspector took another look at it. He got some senior guys that have actually been doing this for quite a while. And they realized that uh, once the rims are adequately cleaned up, that uh, the rings can go on there and you can air them up, especially since they're brand new tires and tubes. So I'm glad cooler heads prevailed and uh, Cal Tire is gonna work on it and hopefully have them ready for me in a few days. So thanks guys, really appreciate it. And man, they are looking sharp. Click the Twin Stick Garage logo to subscribe and be sure to comment down below. I encourage you to share any thoughts, feedback, suggestions, stories, or even just a simple hello. I read and appreciate every one. And if you really want to help out the channel, head over to my Patreon, a subscription-based service that you can sign up and see videos before they're released on YouTube. I'm also going to be posting some content that you can't see anywhere else, so go check it out.